Building your very own custom airsoft field is extremely rewarding, but it also takes a lot of planning and hard work to make something that is truly unique and fun to play on. In today's lesson, we'll be giving you a tour of our personal airsoft field while we explain some of the key things that you should keep in mind if you ever decide to take on this challenge for yourself. And who knows what else we'll get up to. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey. Well, can't ask for much more. It was supposed to be pouring rain, but looks like we're gonna get a bit of a window. Hopefully it's uh, just random rain, nothing too crazy. Obviously, if we're gonna be talking about building a custom airsoft field, then you're gonna need a field somewhere that's you know secure, somewhere that you know that you can build things and not have them terrorized by random people or nature for that matter. Obviously, you wanna make sure that you're not building on private land, that's a big thing, so finding an area that you do have permission to build on is going to be key. I know it's not possible for everyone, but it is critically important. So I would highly suggest that you don't go building wherever you think you can just because there's space, because realistically, if someone owns it, they have the final say on whether or not you can be there. This land used to be an airsoft slash paintball field. So we had the benefit of it being slightly built up before we got here. We didn't have to do all of the random pallets, but in terms of the structures, we built all of those. Oh, here we go. Here comes the, the shipment. Oh, that should be interesting. Yeah, that's not fun. So another big thing that helps, obviously, is having some kind of four-wheeler so you can load stuff around. You're going to need to bring a lot of wood back and materials, so not having to hand bomb everything, especially if it's a bit of a hike back into the woods, that's gonna save you a lot of time and energy. We had a massive dump of snow a couple of weeks ago and now things are starting to warm up. So you're seeing the results of that now. Holy, how am I gonna get around this one? Uh, I think the tree of safety might be my best bet here. Yeah, looks like it, all right. We came out here prepared to build, but not only that, we've got everything we need to have a nice little lunch, build up the morale, because who knows, if we do get stuck by the rain, it's gonna make things a little complicated, but always nice to have a warm meal to keep you going. So this is the start of the airsoft field. We haven't lost anything yet. <laughs> so far, so good. Halfway there, and we haven't lost anything. So as you enter the field here, there's a few bunker spots that were pre-built. This little dugout here, it's one of them. Problem with little spots like this though, is that once you get into them, getting out is very difficult. So you'll have to think about how you're gonna to route to it and from it. Over here is the first bunker that we built. It's a small one, but it's got three windows and it looks over the rock flats, which is one of the most important areas that we have. It's kind of where most of the action goes down because it's fairly open, but three windows all drop down. That's the forested area there. Very sneaky, sneaky stuff happens in there. And these are the rock flats. This is pretty much the center of the map. What's going on? Just taking a little break, Ski? <laughs> tired from riding that. Yeah, I know, man. It's a lot of work. Try wisps. A wisp? Wisps. What the heck are these? They're good. Shout out to wisps. <laughs> They're pretty good. Damn, that has very Parmesan cheese, eh? No leaf. Hey, that's a lot of flavor. It's almost obnoxious. There are some pretty bad ruts dug through here. This is mostly from uh, less respectable four-wheeler riders. Not pointing any fingers. You know who you are. You're watching this video. We even had a Jeep or two come through here. Well, try to. So now you can start to see some of the cover points that are scattered around. This area is uh, pretty open once you get out of the forest. Having a nice CQB area is pretty important to have. We're getting close to the second bunker that we built. This one we did more so for winter camping purposes. We actually tried to build it up as much as possible so we'd be able to stay in there, get warm, 
and we've even spent the night in there a couple times. Might recognize some of these cover points from previous videos. So it's a fairly linear map, but you've got lots of flexibility to take flanks. You can go with the forest, or you can go on the other side, which has a little bit less of a dense tree population, but still gives you plenty of cover for moving around. And this is the second bunker. This is where we always meet up. This is where most of our time is spent when we're idling or between respawns. I think we're going into the woods with it, aren't we? Because we're going to build the third bunker in there. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got the first load of stuff unpacked off the trailer. Gonna grab a few more things back at the truck, but this is the main thing we needed so we can do some repairs. Gonna have to strip these apart. We checked the bunker to make sure there were no wild animals by knocking on the door quite viciously as we always do, but there hasn't really been an issue with that. This is the inside here. It's about five by 15. A little table that folds out of the way. A little fireplace, so I'll get you a light there so you can see what's going on. There's a little fireplace, it's got a little spot for the ash to fall through, and under here is this little rock that you can slide out of the way. And you've got an ash catch which is full of water right now. Oh, I guess we didn't plan that out very well. Yummy. Mmm. Well, under normal circumstances, it works pretty well. Did it have some water in it? Yeah. Oh, that's surprising. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, just the usual stuff. We've got the grill there so we can cook on top of it. Extra raincoats, lots of chairs, random little bits of survival stuff like bug spray and exacto knives. We've got a bunch of this plastic stuff up because we kind of half-heartedly tried to insulate it for the last winter. It did work. It did keep the drafts out, but in terms of keeping any of the temperature and it didn't do so great. We got it up to like positive six or something was the best, even with that fireplace going full tilt. And that's a little smoky. We're going to have to redo the top so the smoke can vent out a little bit better. But for something that we tried for our first attempt, not too bad. Some gardening tools, things that you need to do the random construction so you're not hiking stuff back. And of course, snow shovels because Canada, eh? Thank God for them when we came out here the last time. <laughs> yeah, seriously, the snow was, what was it, like two feet of snow out here? Probably more like two and a half, but just right in front of the door and it was solid. Yeah, no, it took some, some excavation to get in there. On this side, we've got our wood supply and fuel supply. Keep the cut wood dry. Just a couple of extra stones for random projects. We've got some shingles that we're planning on putting on the roof at some point and some screens. So we can do some pop-in screens so we can have this place going at night when the mosquitoes are out. Obviously you don't want screen if you're trying to shoot through the windows. So it's gonna have to be a quick and easy pop-out design. That, that's the woodpecker that's picking patch trees right apart, man. I don't know. You don't hear my couple minutes go pecking? Yeah. Although you can't blame me, I kind of mistaked it for this thing. I heard a rumor, you call me stupid, but apparently they wrap their tongue halfway around the top, the inner wall of their skull and their brain. So when they pack the wood, it doesn't impact on the earth. It could be a fun fact of the day. We're gonna have to Google this when we get back to town. <laughs> I will confirm at the bottom of the screen right now if that's a thing. So if you're seeing like a little blurb about this, then <laughs> it's true, I guess. Right now we're looking at like eight degrees, which is plenty nice compared to what we've had for the past couple of weeks. I am not complaining. We're expecting it to just be pouring. So the fact that it's gonna just be a Nice cool day, keep our temperature moderated while we're out running around doing random things. Oh yeah, we also have a flagpole. It's all rigged up so you can hook your flag onto these little carabiners here. 
and hoist her up when it's game time. All right, so let me show you the forested area now. That is where the second bunker is over there. And you've got a couple of options. You can go all the way down that side if you want to sneak around behind the forest. This is the main kind of road that we walked in here. So this is basically the central path that cuts through the center of the map. This is kind of a main point of contention. People are gonna have their eyes towards the middle of the map more often than not. And so it is heavily dotted, with lots of little spots of cover. So you're able to move through quickly, even if you're taking fire. Now off to the side here, this is where things get a little tricky because as we've discussed before, it's very easy to see out of a forest but not very easy to see into it. If there is someone hiding in there, you are going to be at a big disadvantage. So like everywhere else, there's a couple of ways that you can get into this forest. Lots of scattered big trees that give you the ability to move around quickly. So that's one of the more main ways to get in here. And it's kind of a pathway, it's a little bit overgrown, but this is basically the central way through the forest. As I mentioned, there's a flank over there, and that's how you can get around the forest from the outside, or you can take that middle lane. We're thinking somewhere in the middle of this forest here, you wanna have a third bunker, less closed off. It'll be more of an open concept without doors, so it's just a place that you can run in quickly to cover. Probably somewhere around this area is what we were thinking. Lots of deadfall and collections of brush from previous expeditions in here. Just random objects for cover, like this interesting thing here, which I think used to belong to a gas station. Self-serve, 24 hours, pay at pump, yeah. So this looks like the thing that you'd store squeegees in next to the pump, but works for a little bit of cover, so suits our purposes. As I showed you before, this is the rock flat here. So this is also one of the main entrances into the forest. And again, why that rock flat is so highly contended because all of the roads lead here. So more cover leading up towards that first bunker there that I showed you. You can see into this forest and down to that rock flat area. Now this thing screws me up all the time. We're gonna have to do something about it. This fence here runs along the side here. So whenever you're trying to get to this piece of cover, over there, you have to go around that fence. It runs all the way along here. So if you're on the wrong side of it, then you basically have to walk out into the open and you have to skip this cover or you can try to climb over it, but it's, it's pretty sturdy still. Now, one of my favorite areas here, right near that first bunker, is this little mini, I don't know what you want to call it, a canyon, but... <laughs> It's not very dramatic for a canyon, but it does offer lots of protection because you can get down properly and hide yourself from most of the main sight lines. Lots of wood here that we've been processing. We do a lot of random work over here and then move things to where it needs to be. Now from there, there's this long path that goes along the side of the forest. Where did this... Where did this tire come from? doesn't have any air in it. Oh, well, there's your problem. Okay, where did that tire come from? That's really messing with me right now. <laughs> so yeah, back to what I showed you earlier. This is the first bunker. It doesn't really have a floor or anything. It's just literally storage for wood and whatnot. But eventually we'll get the floor down in here and it, it's got a nice vantage. It is a very good place to get if you're trying to take control over that central area. It's just difficult to get in and out of because you can see it is kind of just in the middle of nowhere. So we are planning on adding just a few more cover spots around it to make it easier, but just gonna take time like everything. It's a work in progress and we're getting there. This is one of the stone bunkers that was here before we got here. And that's the pond there that leads to the end of the rock flat, which I'll show you. Oh shit, it's coming. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get down enough. Shh, I'm being very, very sneaky. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get through this 
<laughs> and in next week's episode, we'll be covering how to perform an ambush. In all seriousness though, I do plan on making an episode about how to perform and defend against ambushes, so make sure you're uh, subscribed for that one. Yeah, that was Snipe Sally's. That was good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Are you sure you're recording? Yeah, I got it. It's all sweet. All right, so we're going to get settled in here and uh, we'll be right back with you. Well, first bit of a burst. It's going to be like this all day, but uh, in a second, we're going to get the hammer that we need to take apart the pallets. I'll have to make a little setup and I'll show you how to do that. We found an interesting way to get the boards off without completely destroying them, but it's going to be interesting to try to rig up out here. I'm sure we'll figure out something. All right, Curtis is off to get the hammer that we forgot before we can get into things, but what we're going to be doing next is separating these boards off. There's a couple of ways you can do it. The one that I've found that works quite well is wedging a piece of wood through here on stilts and then a support piece under here. That way you can just kind of lift them up, you know, section by section because we've got four that run along the length of the pallet. So we just go along carefully, making sure that we're putting more damage into this guy than anything else. Or we can use another piece of wood as a striking plate, but I'm gonna have to rig something up here. Let's get creative. Obviously having a nice lightweight folding saw is kind of essential if you're gonna do any serious outdoor camping. I can highly recommend these, the Boreals. These saws are quite amazing. This is actually what did all of the flooring for that entire bunker and most of the cuts that we had to do around it. Now we've more or less got what we need for our little stands. Then we've got this piece that can run in the middle. So basically just a little stilt section like this, but it's gonna go under the board that we're trying to remove. So let's get that rigged up into the ground. No, oh, man down. So that's the rig there. You got the two arms that go to a board that goes under this one. So when the striking force is applied, it's only pushing up from the underside here. And that should give us what we need once Curtis gets back up in. Can you move those boards for me, buddy? Which ones? The ones with the nails sticking out of them? Sure. There. Yeah. Timber. <laughs> that was all right, eh? That was all right. Is that the sun? What's happening sun? right now? <laughs> Stop! Where? We go, all spooled up again. <sighs> okay, so that should be all the wood we're gonna need for a little bit. We're gonna need to get some more pallets eventually, but for today, this will give us a nice little bit that we can fasten onto the other bits of cover over there. Minor debris, which is nice didn't completely destroy these. Most of these are still fully in one piece, so be able to use them to their fullest. We're probably gonna have to hack off a little bit, and obviously we're gonna have to deal with these hazards because you don't want them when you're running around the field. So we'll get them all safe and secure, and then we'll go fasten them to some of the cover points that desperately need it. We gotta get this one righted. We're gonna have to repair some of those over there bang down the nails. Most of these are okay. That one is pointless. That one's just full of holes. Like you cannot hide behind that. So we got to do something with that one. 
this is like it's things like this that have just gotten derelict that we're going to need to fix they'll stand back up but we got to get them all secured into the ground we'll need ground posts and a way to secure it this thing is weird it's like a it's an actual door on a hinge so it can stand up but we need to actually secure it so it stays up lots of materials here so no matter what we're going to be able to build something it's just you know it's a labor of love you really have to spend the time plan things out think about what is going to be important for you whether it be having a proper bunker that you can get inside or just placing cover around there's so many elements to consider so one of the first things i would recommend is that you start mapping things out and thinking about how the game is going to progress and the different types of game modes that you're going to want to play not every game mode is going to work in certain maps so try to think about something that is going to allow you to play as many different styles of game as you want during the summer this trench here leads off to the side down that way and bunker number two is just over those trees there so in the summer when this is all dried out you can move very quietly through here because you're just stepping on rocks right which brings me to another point is being able to maneuver stealthily through your map is going to be something that a lot of players will want but you can't make it so easy that everyone can sneak around it should take a certain level of finesse to get around well, it looks like we've got some dark clouds rolling in right now I think it's uh, now or never to get some of these boards nailed down. What I'm thinking I might try doing is using the nails that are already in these to kind of fasten it to where it's needed. Now, I don't know if anyone needs this warning, but if you're ever working around these kind of nails, obviously be careful, but also make sure your tetanus shot is up to date. As well, if you are gonna be knocking nails out and you're gonna be using a four-wheeler like we are, make sure you're mindful of where these nails are ending up so they're not ending up in your tire instead. All right. Let's grab this handful here. Honestly though, all things considered, I, I was fully expecting to be out here and just pouring rain all day. So if it only rains at the start and the end, can't really complain. Yeah, we'll leave that one for now. Decent boards over there. It's that middle one that's just the worst, eh? All right, let's, let's work on that one. This is the one that's in desperate need of boards. So we're gonna need to secure that again with some uprights because this part that was holding it up is pretty broken. Yeah, maybe something like this would be the best way. I'll try to straighten some of these nails out. At least enough that they can be retapped. Yeah, something like that. Nice, good as nails. All right, now we just gotta repeat that a few times. Perfect timing though that's all the boards I brought with me so yeah we're just gonna need to kind of bring up an upright on that corner so it's actually got something dug into the ground that'll keep it steady and then kind of replace this rotted mess that was originally kind of like that and that'll help it stand up straighter than it currently is no it's uh it's going to be a slow process, but just upgrading all these things and making some more secure areas so you can move through the field a little bit more fluidly will be nice. Up until now, it's been kind of a slog getting through some of these open areas without getting contacted. So just whatever we can do to kind of increase the pacing, because that is one issue. If you don't have enough cover, what ends up happening is everyone has to take their time to get where they're going. And it just, it gets out of hand after a while because you don't want to just be running out in the wide open. That's obviously not the greatest tactical decision you could make. So being able to move from cover to cover not only keeps you safer during the match, but also gives you the ability to speed up how things are playing. Just some of the things that you need to consider when you're building a field. Well, it's just a wee bit of rain. Not too bad. Meeting Mr. Noodles in there. <laughs> 
So yeah, before we leave, I guess we're just going to take this wood and stand it up inside of the bunker, whatever we don't use today. That way it has a chance to dry out because if you attach these boards while they're soaking wet, first of all, if you're hitting it with nails, it's, it's a little bit more annoying. But the second problem is that once it dries out, it's not going to be the same shape that it was when you put it up. Wood boards like this, they're going to swell up when they're wet. So if you, even if you have them perfectly tight against each other, if they're wet, when they dry out, you're going to end up with gaps in the middle. That's something we learned the hard way when we were building this bunker. A couple of little more spots like that that we're going to do. It's currently... 236 so i don't know we've got to get it sundown is going to be at 552 so in three hours from now we want to be on the road before it gets dark so we'll probably be out here for another hour or two then pack it up i hope today's video helped to inspire you to get creative out there and if you have any suggestions for our field then we would absolutely love to hear them there's still lots of work to do so we'll be sure to update you as more work gets done out there until next time thank you so much for watching class is dismissed <laughs> I don't think that's supposed to be there. <laughs> I was about to put that in my mouth, but then I changed my mind. <laughs>